Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my painting, Blue Jay Dreams. I decided to paint a blue jay because I really care for this bird. The colors are beautiful, his feathers, his patterns are so nice, and I enjoy his intelligence, and I also enjoy feeding him peanuts. In part one, I'm working with many different shades of blue. I'm working wet on wet, and I'm coming in very loosely. The background was also loosely done. Then I start to tighten up a little bit in the first part one. I hope you enjoy it. Give it a like if you do, or a thumbs up. And now let's paint. I decided to paint a blue jay. I started with a pencil sketch. The blue jay was perched, so I'm showing him from a side view. I got my basic proportions sketched in. Which will need some tweaking. And I decided to approach this wet and fairly loose to start. I've done blue jay paintings before. And I may have made the mistake of using all the same blue tone. So for this painting, I decided to use a variety of blues. Lightly sketching in some branches. And spraying my water. Now the surface is wet. And I started out with cobalt blue. Next I moved to a cerulean blue. And the next color that came up was turquoise. Looking at my reference photo, I did see many different shades of blue according to where the light was hitting and adding the iridescence to the feathers. For the darks, I used indigo and I used Windsor Violet. And here my next blue came in with Verditer Blue. Very nice tone. Now I'm working on a wet bird, but I'm preserving some areas between the wets to keep white, dry feathers. And then I'm painting in some individual feathers. So we have a whole shaded bird with different tonalities. And the last color I added was some Quinacrodon magenta, which I may not be pronouncing correctly, but it starts with a Q-U-I-N-A. And that is a very nice color, and you can see it in the background, as well as yellow ochre, turquoise, and some sap green. So I've taken this very loose, loosely done blue jay, and I'm coming in with colors around him. In some areas, they're actually flowing into him, and his colors are actually flowing into the background. That is Viridian Green, which is a very nice green as well. So the whole thing started out just loose and colorful. Now it's dry and I'm cleaning up my pencil lines as best I can.
I'm carefully sketching the details of the face of the bird. Where his beak begins, where his beak ends, where he has some feathers, where his coloring is. And I'm correcting some of the lines around the beak. This is not as dark as I will make it. I am sketching lightly with indigo and Payne's gray. I'm trying to get the eye in the right placement. I'm also trying to preserve some pure whites around the edge of the bird to show the sunlight reflecting on his face. And I am, again, looking very carefully at a reference photo to get these details correct. Once I have the details correct, then I will darken, feeling more confident that they're correctly placed. I was not quite sure how to do the eye of the bird, and I tried various amounts of dark and white reflection, reflection glow until I got it to my satisfaction. But I really did look at several different reference photos of a blue jay's eye as well as the beak. In a previous painting I had painted the whole beak very dark, but looking at this photo and others I noticed that there is a tuft of white feathers as the beak joins the face. So I'll be working with that in this picture. My goal was to make it recognizable as that species of bird. However, not to be so darned tight and detailed that I couldn't just depict the happiness of a little bird sitting on a perch in the sunshine on a pretty morning. And that was the feeling I was trying to get across here. And since I happen to really like blue jays for their color and for the way they hang out in a family group and they all seem to watch out for each other, they're also very intelligent and some people find them quarrelsome and fighty and rather noisy. But I enjoy their character and their intelligence and the way they'll come when I call them and feed them peanuts. So I do enjoy Blue Jays. Here I'm painting colors right up next to where the whites of the Blue Jays feathers are so I can define his body more clearly. and adding a little shading into the white. I've added some yellow ochre, some of the Quinn magenta, and some Payne's gray for shading. And now I'm defining the feathers on the wing. One of the prettiest things about a blue jay are the striped feathers, which are quite distinctive. So I first am finding the individual feathers in these clumps that I've created. 
and defining the shading around the muscular parts of the bird's wing. I'm adding indications of individual feathers, the thin lines that go between them. And I'm shaping my blurry wet start to be a little more refined as the individual feathers, including adding some shadows into the white areas of feathers so they will stand out against the background. And at last, I'm adding some of the stripes of the feathers. Looking carefully at my reference photo to see the direction that the stripe goes in, whether it's across, curved, or at a diagonal slant. And it seems every time I paint a bird or a different animal, I learn an awful lot about their anatomy. For the darks, I'm using a mixture of Payne's Gray and Indigo. Sometimes I even throw a little bit of the Windsor Violet in as well to make a good deep color that also has a hint of other colors in it. Making the tail feathers a little longer by adding some strong darks to the blue that I had put down previously. I've counted the number of tail feathers showing. I've divided the tail into these sections and now I am adding the stripes for the tail feathers. Going back to darken some of the wing feathers where I had marked them out. And last, moving on to the tiny little feathers at the top of the wing, which also had some striping. Each pattern of striping was a little different on the different sections of the bird. I guess because the feathers serve a different function or purpose. Refining the face with a little bit of shading. Coming into the eye area and attempting to preserve some of the lid around the eye while making the inside darker. I'm putting background right up to where I want the white of the bird to show on the top of his head. And I'm pretty satisfied with him at the moment. Now I'm trying to decide how to work the stick that he's perched on. What color, what shape it should be, 
And I'm ready to go to work on that. First I erase the stick outline that I did because I didn't want to be so restricted. And then I decide on an approach. Got it pretty wet. And I came in with a sort of yellow ochre type of color, thinking to add some brightness to the stick. And now I'm adding the background colors around it. I'm not looking at a reference for this. I'm just sort of painting by what looks pretty and seems logical for what would be in the background. Maybe some greens for some leaves. And since I really like that Quint magenta, I'm putting some of that in too. Thinking maybe some dawn colors almost. Nothing too clear. Just letting them blur together. And I thought they looked sort of pretty. I hope you enjoyed my videos of Blue Jay Dreams. You can subscribe below at the links, and if you click on the bell, you'll get a notice whenever I post a new video. Also below, there are some links to check out for the products I like to use for my Facebook art page, I write a blog, and various prints and products that I make out of my art. Now you keep creating, and I'll see you next video.